I don't know how people could build a business not being a consumer of their own problem, right? That they're trying to solve. Reselling, this yeah. is the secondary market. It's $3 billion That's today. That's insane. Today. Let's jump back on kind of like your zero to one entrepreneurial story because I think we we're, we're talking about like the orbit and kind of like this entrepreneurial spirit and I feel like you encompass that in like different stages of, of your life. Like always kind of had this like pioneering spirit and the things you've done. But yeah, man, let's let's hear your zero to, zero to one, like zero to like first dollar that you made as an entrepreneur. So I'm born and raised in Miami, mm -hmm. which is more and more unique <laughs> as this ecosystem grows. Miami Gardens, to be uh, mm -hmm. you know specific, it's kind of where the the Super Bowl commercials yeah, and the yeah, magazine yeah, yeah. ads they don't show. <laughs> so, son of immigrants, son of Jamaican immigrants, and you know, ever since I was young, you know, uh, my I, my first entrepreneurial uh, endeavor I can remember is going to Sam's Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. Used to buy candy. Yeah. You know, big and, and this is fairly common. Big candy packs. I remember yeah, yeah. Airheads. <laughs> and used to bring them to school, elementary and middle school, and sell them for 25 cents a piece. Nice. <laughs> and made about, you know, usually make about 60, $65 for the box. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but these were big boxes. That's why we were going to Sam's Club. Yeah, yeah. And then in turn, we would turn those dollars, I would pool it with a friend of mine. Yeah. Into sneakers, wow. right? Into sneakers, wow. into, back then, sneaker reselling wasn't as popular as, as it yeah. is now. I mean, it was just to actually wear the shoes, be the uh -huh. first person in the school to wear the be shoes. Be fresh. <laughs> so I, if I remember back, that's probably my first endeavor. I mean, Airheads, we used to have sour straws, mm -hmm. hot Cheetos, those kind of things. And, you know, sell them right out of your backpack. I was going to say, yeah, were you like by the lockers? Like, yeah, yeah no, sell them right out of your backpack. I think the statute of limitations is kind of passed on that <laughs> But that was my first endeavor into entrepreneurship and kind of lead me where I am now. So I, I levied that into in high school. I went to high school down here, highly in Miami Lakes, mm -hmm. uh, a local high school. Didn't do any of that there. Just working, you know, minimum wage, part time. Yeah, yeah. And then ending up in FIU. Okay. So local college, one of the biggest colleges in the U.S. And in FIU, I studied finance. So mm -hmm. finance and communications. I originally wanted to do sports talk, right? Sports journalism. Got it. Got it. Sports writing. Did you I grow up like an athlete? Like you yes. were into the sneakers and everything. So you were, what was your sport? Yeah. So I played basketball in high Got school. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Basketball, baseball, football. You know, I loved all those sports and uh -huh. I played basketball though, did soccer, did bowling. In high school, good question. Mm -hmm. But then I went to FIU, studied sports writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And journalism. Yeah quickly learned that there's very, very little money to yeah. be made in that <laughs> industry. Yeah. And it was kind of a time where Twitter was coming out as well, which uh -huh. has, you know, bastardized, you know, the news and yeah, sports yeah, writing yeah. in general. Mm -hmm. In a good way, I think. I think we're getting our news a lot faster. Wait, what do you mean, like, just because it's anybody can publish anything and it gets out there and gets picked up? Like... Yeah, that... so not only that, but so, so the newspaper model is mm -hmm you get yesterday's news yeah, yeah. on your front porch so you can read it with your breakfast and, yeah. and your coffee. Twitter, as it's happening, mm -hmm. you're getting the news yeah. and the barrier to entry for anyone who's creating news or reporting on the news is so small yep. that going to school to learn how to do that and, and start in a newsroom, yeah. it, it didn't really make sense. So mm -hmm. at that time I was working in sports talk radio here in Miami. Okay but I pivoted to finance, right? So I double majored in community. I was so far in yeah. that I figured I'd finish the degree, yeah. but also get a finance degree as well, okay. right? So I, I, I leveraged that with, with no network, no internships or anything in the banking world. Mm -hmm. I leveraged that to a part-time teller job really? with, with okay. Bank of America. Got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So worked my way from part-time teller all the way through the kind of positions in Bank of America, mm -hmm. all the way up to Merrill Lynch. So okay. Bank of America owns Merrill Lynch. Gotcha. And went into kind of the wealth management, invest, investment advisory mm -hmm. um, portion of the business. Did that for a while with that entrepreneurial spirit that yeah. I think that started in middle school and elementary. I went out on my own. I opened okay. up my own office. Gotcha. And did, did really well, did well by my clients, but all the time, I've been a huge sneakerhead. 
Yeah. Right? Was it like like something like you kept kind of like in the closet, like hidden? You know what I mean? Like with your clients, I feel like when you're in wealth management and yeah. all that, it's like very, I don't know, sometimes very stuffy, right? Like yeah. the, the button up life and, and you're talking big numbers and all this stuff, but then like mm -hmm. sneakers are so like, like culture and cool and like it's yeah. really different. That's a good question. By the time I got into that, yeah. So so there's a whole thing with sneakers. Sneakers and, and my line of demarcation uh -huh. was really the Galaxy foam. So this okay. was like in 2000, I want to say nine, 2010. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a great jumping off point. This is where I started thinking of the idea of Loan My Soul. Okay. That far back, where I think sneakers jumped a they, they jumped the shark where the access to them became mm -hmm. so much different than it used to be. It used Got to it. be if you went to the store early enough mm -hmm. or if you had some connections, yeah. um, you'd be able to get your pair. Mm -hmm. Like if you had some connections at the store, yeah. right? Yeah. With that release, it became something different where you had to go online and mm -hmm. be online at a certain time mm -hmm. and check out at a certain time. Yeah. So it became different. So to your question, by the time I got into wealth management and banking, I kind of had, had my collection, yeah. but I wasn't really, <laughs> It wasn't really top of mind for me anymore. Got I, I kind of transitioned into another life. Gotcha. Honest, yeah. You know, wingtips, Oxford. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's why I see you're wearing some fresh purple Nikes right now. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't picture you like all buttoned up. Wearing you know? a suit every <laughs> single day. Um, so I, I was always the youngest person uh -huh. in in the office and, and yeah. on the team, but I didn't really let that personality and those sneakers show. Mm -hmm. uh, besides the weekend, and I wasn't really buying shoes that much just because I felt that I had passed that phase and they were mm. so hard to get, right? We had, yeah. you know, platforms like StockX and Gold mm -hmm. kind of kind of rise yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So as I'm doing that and having my own office, um, this idea that came up, you know, 10 years mm -hmm. ago in my head, and I actually registered the domain back yeah. then, I started thinking that, wow, everything has moved towards this. Right, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. sneakers have become so popular. Yeah, they become mainstream. Yeah, they become an alternative asset where individuals who are where I was mm -hmm. in high school and in college now they're using their kicks to make money for them. Yeah, right. They're not yeah. working to get the kicks. Yeah, yeah. They're using the kicks to as make money asset, for them yeah. as an as as an asset. That's crazy. Not only that, but it's crazy. Vintage clothing, secondhand clothing. Yeah. The kind of the stigma towards that mm -hmm. has dissipated so much yeah. in, in the recent years. It's become cool. Vintage yeah. has become cool. Definitely. And obviously, the circular economy with things like dresses and yeah, purses yeah, yeah, and things yeah, like yeah, that yeah, for sure. has become popular. So everything was moving into this direction. I was thinking, wow, no one has done this yet. Mm -hmm. No one has really offered these items in uh, in a way that is being offered with other things like the yeah. dresses and the yeah purses. yeah like rent the runway and stuff like that so I was like thinking I've had this idea for so long nothing mm -hmm. like it exists it's everything yeah. is moving towards this direction mm -hmm. what better time than now like yeah. I'm at a point in my life and and the technology is so accessible now mm -hmm. that you know let's let's try this mm -hmm. Let, let's give this a shot I know it can work yeah let's just prove that point because. I remember when I first thought of it, I went to a developer to, to try to develop it, and he wanted to charge me five thousand mm -hmm. dollars to develop it. At that point, working minimum wage yeah. and not knowing anything wow, about that's tech, crazy. I was yeah. like, "Okay, so that's the end of that idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put that away." Uh -huh. So now, with you know a little bit more ability to kind of fund it myself and a little bit more knowledge and access to the tech mm -hmm. that would be needed to build it, I figured, Let, "Let's try it." Yeah. So. That's kind of my truncated uh, journey to where I am now. Yeah, I love it. That's a great yeah. story, man. Entrepreneurial throughout, always like, always flipping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I started flipping candy and now. Yeah, now flipping candy. And then, so, okay, a couple of questions. Like, I want to yeah. understand, because I'm, I'm not a sneakerhead. I'm rocking Nike. Look at these disgusting you know, beat up no, Nikes. No. Those are everyday joints. Those they are, are every days. They yeah. were fresh. They were a birthday present. You know, I, I would say I'm a shoes guy. Like I, mm. I like shoes, mm. but I really never got into the sneaker life. I mm. think like it passed me. You know what I mean? Like I had a couple friends that were into it. Most of my friends weren't. Like I grew up in the Midwest. Like you know, wearing boots. <laughs> you know, like you like, up? like northern Chicago. Okay. So like okay. northern Chicago, southern Wisconsin. You know, it's like if you take a right. 
you know, then it's city, city, city until you're downtown. If you take a left, it's cornfield as far as the eye can see. So it was like, we never, you know, never thought about that. We had, you know, it was like, yeah, boots, car hearts and <laughs> stuff like that. But, but I love sneakers and I like appreciate them when I see good ones, like, like what you got on here. But tell me like how you see it as an asset class, because I get the flipping of it, right? Like I, I get that and you get these rare drops and there's only so many made, like it's very similar to NFTs. It's kind of like a similar type of a mindset, the scarce thing. But when you look at it as an asset class, like I guess, I don't, and I don't know how Rent the Runway works, but how do you think about it? Like, do you, do you see people on your platform that have like a hundred shoes and they're really like leasing them all as an asset class like that? Or is it more of like a, a side way to kind of make money right. uh, off something that like you're going to buy anyway, yeah. but you're like, you might as well get it paid off almost like a, like a Airbnb vacation home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so what's happening or what's happened is when I say asset class, I say that begrudgingly just because that is what they have become yeah. as they've become more popular. Mm -hmm. And by asset class, I mean people are using them to buy, they're buying them basically mm -hmm. just to be able to sell them yeah. in the future to someone who is willing to buy at an elevated price. Yeah. So that has already happened. Mm -hmm. We don't have to really prove the point that sneakers have become yeah. a way for people to make money. Yeah. That has happened. Yeah. But how it's happened now with the big platforms, you know, coming up within the past five or six years, someone will buy a shoe, have mm -hmm. access to a shoe from the manufacturer, be it through online or yeah. connections at a store. Yeah. They'll buy it at retail, mm -hmm. right? If they're lucky. Mm -hmm. And retail, let's say an average retail is 200 bucks mm -hmm. for a pair of shoes. It used to be 130 when mm -hmm. I was into it, but yeah. 200 bucks now yeah. for, for an average pair. Immediately, as that shoe comes out, the price that you that you have to pay to get that shoe online is 300 percent over that i'm talking immediately that's crazy and here's why and there was a nike vp who actually it was revealed in some internal documents that last year mm -hmm. only three percent of people who wanted to buy the shoe who were on the nike sneakers app to yeah. buy the shoe only three percent was able to get access to wow. spend their own money to get the shoe so you have a combination of wow. Popularity, yeah. scarcity, uh -huh. and just the ability and, and enough people who are willing to buy at those elevated prices that they are, have become that asset class, yeah. right? Yeah. What we want to do at Low My Soul mm -hmm. is we want to embrace the fact mm -hmm. that Gen Z and you know a lot of sneakerheads, even my age, mm -hmm. use their sneakers mm -hmm. to make money. Yeah. Right. They use yeah. it as an income source, yeah. just like. You know, somebody might take a few Uber routes or yeah. rent out their yeah, house yeah. for a month. For sure. So they don't have to go to, to a job that they don't want to mm -hmm. anymore. They, they use their closet already yeah. to, to make money by getting access to these shoes and then selling them. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is embrace that, mm -hmm. but also bring it back to what the culture was really born out of, mm -hmm. which was experiencing these shoes, right? Yeah, so yeah. These, these shoes got popular, right? Watching the athletes yeah. uh, perform in them that we loved, being able to, you know, sell airheads at twenty-five cents a pop, mm -hmm. sell enough of them that you can afford yeah. a pair of, you know, low Air Force Ones so yeah, you can yeah. wear on Valentine's <laughs> Day uh -huh. in middle school. And those memories are still fresh in my mind. But all those memories came from experiencing the shoe, mm -hmm. right? Wearing the shoe, opening and it, and opening having that, it, that putting smell. that fresh shoe on, man. Exactly. When you got a fresh shoe, and it's you're like, damn, the outfit's on point. You feel like a million bucks. Exactly. So, so <laughs> that over the past couple of years, as the popularity of sneakers has risen, uh -huh. that has been lost. People are strictly buying the shoe yeah. to then sell it. I saw right? like one of my buddy's uh, friend does that. We went to his apartment in like yeah. Brickell or whatever, and he opened his closet. It was. <laughs> All the way, all the same. It was like a Yeezy. All he's gonna sell them, right? And he's just selling. He had literally fifty pairs in there. And more power to him because yeah. that—that's what's been profitable yeah. over the past couple of years, as the manufacturers have mm -hmm. kind of helped this out by making it so scarce. So they to have access to the shoe. So they're—they're they're trying to, you know, they're—they're they're kind of. They're puppeting the thing in the back, right? Because they yeah. have access to the to the supply, right? Right, and they know the demand is millions of people that want this shoe. And so they're, you know, kind of purposefully releasing it to this private group and this group. Is it like that or is it more like there's brokers that are like kind of, 
I yeah. imagine it's not like not like shady, but yeah. just like so. So you said it. Mm -hmm. I did it. So not explicitly, uh -huh. right? Are they yeah. providing these third-party sites with the mm -hmm. supply? But the scarcity and the fervor yeah. of people wanting these shoes and not being able to get them mm -hmm. that rises the overall popularity of these specific models. Yeah. So then, what I think the manufacturers can then sell a bunch of their lower, their, their less popular models, for yeah. example. So let's say a Travis Scott and Nike collaboration comes yeah. out, right? And mm -hmm. only 3% of the people who want to get it, get yeah. it. Those 97% that didn't get it might be looking at another pair that's not mm -hmm. as rare to then buy. They're so, going to get the, they're going to get the generic one, not yeah. the Travis Scott. Yep, so explicitly sure. there's no connections between the manufacturers and the third party sites, but the scarcity does help everyone mm -hmm. when we're talking mm -hmm. about attention and focus and desire yeah. for these models. So what we want to do is yes, embrace that monetization piece and mm -hmm. the world we're in now, but also bring it back to experience mm -hmm. and the culture that popularize the culture, yeah. having access to these items as well without yeah. being roped off and priced out yeah. like they currently have, like I have been. Yeah. Like yeah, I have yeah. been, right? I'm part of the 97% that gets, mm -hmm. that It's true. That, that and you know it's getting jacked up and it's like, if you can, I, I, I see a lot of similarities to kind of like, I've been looking into that because we're in an Airbnb now, right? I'm yeah. like, God damn, they're printing money. You know what yeah. I mean? Like every week they are printing money on this place. Yeah. And, and obviously has maintenance and things like that, but it's similar where it's like you, you have an asset and you lend it to someone else who wants it for that week. So with Loan My Soul, how long are the, the terms that you can rent it for? Yeah, so right now we have four day rentals. Okay. That was our first kind of duration. Mm -hmm. We are gonna be expanding that soon mm -hmm. to, to eight day rentals but right now it's just four day rentals. We found that's a happy medium as far as price point is concerned with the yeah. models that we have. And as far as introducing this ability to sneaker heads across the country, yeah. I mean here in Miami and across the country, because when we go to, so we sourced a lot of our first users mm -hmm. at the sneaker conventions. Yeah. So these sense. sneaker yeah. conventions, this is so popular. These sneaker conventions are happening weekly. There's one, really? there was one last Saturday there's one tomorrow really? here in Miami. Wow. So when you go to these sneaker conventions, it's table upon table upon table of people who have bought these shoes, mm -hmm. maybe for retail, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. And they're looking to flip them to someone else yeah. who wasn't able to get that access that they were able to get. Yeah. Yeah. So what we did is go to these sneaker conventions and speak to all of these individuals and tell them there's another way to do this. Mm -hmm. You can still make money from your item, but you can keep it yourself. Keep it, yeah. You can wear it yourself. You can even sell it later on if yeah, you yeah. want to. So that is where we kind of sourced our first, our first users, and that's where we're sourcing users even mm -hmm. to this day. It's people that are already looking at them as an asset. People right? are already looking at them as, as an and asset. And so yeah. you're saying, hey, you can have both. You can, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can literally, just like an Airbnb, get the mortgage paid off and then yeah. sell it yeah. You know, so you're, you're kind of double dipping, which is amazing. Or you just wear it, keep it, you know? Yeah, keep it. And that's nuts. So I, I think, you know, this, this show's called Building Community. Yes. And there's like a huge aspect of, you know, kind of what, what we're trying to do with the Shrimp Society and, uh -huh. and everything is, is this kind of community-led growth. And yeah. the sneakerhead community is massive community. And it's, it's like, they got sub-communities. It's, it's big, right? It's, yeah. it's global. It's, it's a... Man, I don't know how big the market cap is on, on sneakers, but I'm guessing it's in the billions. So right? just reselling, this yeah. is the secondary market. It's $3 billion That's today. That's insane. Today, and it's That's insane. estimated to be $30 billion in the near future. But just, we're not even talking about the manufacturers. Yeah. Just the kids. That is insane. Buying a set of oh shoes from God. each other is $3 billion. $3 billion. Yeah. So you have a $3 billion community yeah. all over the world, running nonstop, online, in person, at, uh, at conventions, all this different stuff. Like, how have you been able to leverage community in, in your business and, and growing it? It's like in the early stages, having those early adopters, that community is so important. So yeah, how's, yeah. That, how's that been for you? Yeah, so that is paramount, even just when you first start as a sneakerhead. Back then there was, a few forums that you visited yeah. to get 
early pictures of a shoe that might come out in six months mm -hmm. or to discuss the sizing variances yeah. on different <laughs> models. And that community has always been there. So I guess I was indoctrinated into community first yeah. with that, you know, lining up with each other outside of a Foot Locker mm -hmm. from midnight <laughs> all the way to 6 a.m. Yeah. So that is kind of baked in, to your point, to the sneakerhead, to, 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 the, to sneakers. So how we're leveraging it is basically just embracing and bringing it back to that. Because mm -hmm. in my perspective, it has moved away from that as yeah. sneakers have got more popular. It's become, you know, buying and selling to each other yeah. and, and profiting from your fellow sneakerhead. Yeah. Bringing it back to experience and access with each other, yeah. I think that fosters a community um, very, very kind of innately where I'm helping you experience mm -hmm. this pair that you may not have access to otherwise. Yeah. So community is a huge part of, of what we're doing. It's, it's a huge part of sneakers. It's a huge part of getting the trust mm -hmm. of a, a cohort as big as sneakerheads worldwide yeah. because you know, we're all going through this together. We all strike out on Sneakers app every, yeah. every Saturday at 10 a.m. <laughs> and we're all pissed about it yeah. at 10.01. Uh -huh. And that's why we decided to build a solution where, hey, if you did strike out, come and join this community because we're gonna give you access mm -hmm. to it and we're going to um, kind of fight back yeah. against what's Well, it's what's like the, the other 97%, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like you're the, the platform for the other 97% who's, who's not in on the drop, right? And yeah. who wants to, you know, to, to have that community experience and like that, that cultural experience as well. So like, yeah. tactically, how does that work alone my soul? Like, how do you build community around your brand? Like, you know, let's say you just met 20 people that are interested at the conference then then what happens yeah so so it starts with sneakers on the ground to your point Love at, the, <laughs> at, at the at kind of the conventions and the conferences and onboarding them onto Low my soul where they can then find all of the aspects of a community that i benefited from when mm -hmm. i was just learning about sneakers where we offer the um, ability to um, kind of learn about what's going on in the yeah. sneaker community we, we have a community corner mm -hmm. basically it's called the crease cool so <laughs> where we post different happenings in mm -hmm. the sneaker world we preview upcoming releases mm -hmm. we interview different shoepreneurs yeah. right so the Very cool. these individuals who've made a living off of sneakers these sneaker youtubers as well so we yeah. are hoping to build that community on the platform mm -hmm. and nice. just just displaying that trust, right? Yeah. That trust that when you do get a sneaker from your fellow community member, yeah. it's real, right? Yeah. It's what you expected. Yeah. It's in the condition you expected. Mm -hmm. And you treat that shoe as if it was your own because it's yeah. your fellow community member. And then yeah. when, when an owner gets their shoe back, they see that it has been treated as if it was as if it was them who wore it. Yeah. And then that kind of grows the community with each other. Because that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. We're trying yeah. to foster repeat transactions between exactly. our community just to, in essence, build it, right? So you yeah. have trust, maybe a specific member on the site has mm -hmm. a, your size yeah. and they have specific models that you uh, are very interested yeah, in. Yeah. You start renting from them and then you start continually renting from yeah. them because you're like, okay. You build a relationship yeah, with them. You build a relationship, absolutely. So, exactly. Yeah, you know, community, just like with, with what we're doing at the Shrimp Society, it's so huge in building that trust and that camaraderie with, with each and every member. Yeah, 100%. And I think it's such an X factor in, uh, in, in growing your business too, because you're genuinely excited about a community that you're involved in, right? If you're, if you're active and you're, you're posting on the crease, I love that. Yeah. You're, you're excited to tell people about it, yeah. you know? And when you have good experiences, you tell people about it and, and you share not only in, in kind of the joy of, with the community members, mm -hmm. but then it, it trickles outside of that, right? Yeah. And I think that's such a, I think it's the new kind of model of referrals and organic growth, right? Because people talk about that or have been talking about that for forever, right? Organic growth, organic growth. Well, what does that really mean? It means word of mouth. It means people are so excited about what's going on here that they're telling people and people are coming in, right? And mm -hmm. that's, that's the best case scenario. And in a community, it's, that should be the, the main goal, right? It should all be kind of community-led growth or organic growth like that. And, but I'm curious, well, tactically one thing, so do you have someone 
that you pay to run the like the news and things like that? You were talking about like that, no, that's all you? No, so that is all me and my co-founder. But nice. I am, like I said, I, I'm a huge sneakerhead, man. Yeah. That, so you're, you're already I've been all, I'm, I'm, I'm so deep in it that I'm on all the blogs. I know all the releases coming out and I know what interests me and community members because I'm talking to them all mm -hmm. the time about upcoming releases and, and, and things that are happening mm -hmm. in the industry that the, those specific, those things you're speaking of, like the articles and stuff, those are all written by me right mm -hmm. now, right? Nice. Those are written by me. The kind of, even at the conventions, I'm at, I'm at the table yeah. Yeah. speaking to sure. all the sneakerheads of, of why Loan My Soul is such a better solution than what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at some point we definitely will bring on team members to help with that people mm -hmm. are as passionate as i am yeah so far as me man similar yeah, to what you're doing i'm in the same boat i'm <laughs> in the same boat i'm the one sleeping at the hack house you know yeah, i'm the yeah. one getting the water and the food and i'm the one writing the posts and all that stuff and a lot of people a lot of people most people are like oh you you should you should find someone to do that you should find someone to especially like the writing and the content right because it mm. takes a lot of time but I think there's a, like a uniformity that you need and like a similar message and tone that just keeps coming, right? And it comes across all the platforms and it's like, because at the end of the day, if you're building a brand, right, and you're building this community, it, it, it has to be cohesive, right? And right now it's, it's almost too challenging to bring someone else up to speed or document what exactly like that brand energy is that's being translated or what that tone is or what that is because it's also in flux right these are growing businesses I mean, like so things are changing as well and it's like it's hard to you know all, it almost takes too much time where it's just like okay it's just in your head right it's just what is, is coming out but i think that's so interesting I, I get that all the time from people who are like oh you should just hire someone to do this and hire someone to do that i'm like yeah but this is a really important piece it doesn't seem important but yeah. the voice and the tone and the rhetoric and everything coming out needs to kind of like yeah. for for a while i think and it's probably one of the last things that will be like handed off because i think it's really important but i mean that's also challenging so it's you and your co-founder right now right mm -hmm. and now with this with this new a16z so is it is a funding as well yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it is funded they are providing us guidance and their expertise, nice. um, obviously. But yeah, it is a, it's a funded accelerator. So with that, with those resources, we'll be able to improve the platform so much, right? Yeah. Obviously, um, onboard a lot more members because we're waitlisted right now, Okay. right? But we are looking forward to onboarding so many more members and onboarding so much more items right. onto the site. But yeah, it, you know, I, I think to your point with the tone, that's something that I saw as well, where kind of the messaging and the mm -hmm. tone and the, the importance of certain topics, yeah. that voice is, it needs to be consistent mm -hmm. and, you know, finding someone, hopefully we will, and finding, mm -hmm. you know, amazing people who are just as passionate yeah. about, about it as we are. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, instead of it just being a rote article about, okay, this is a current event. Exactly. This is a current event, what's happening? No, this is the current event. This is what's so crazy about it. Yeah. This is what it means about, yeah, you know, yeah. this is what it, you know, means about things going forward. That's a whole different thing. It is. It's like, you gotta be, you gotta, that person, that's gonna take over kind of communication or content yeah. or that. It's like, they have to be, in my opinion, they have to be a practitioner as well, yeah. right? Cause you're a practitioner, I'm a practitioner. We're, we're, we're doing the thing that we're building as well, yeah. right? Which is like the ultimate, I, I don't know how people could build a business not being a consumer of their own problem, problem, right? That they're trying to solve. And it's like that person for us, like that person needs to know what's going on in Hack House and what this feels like, because yeah. that's gonna be translated into the vibe and the story we want to tell right yeah. and then i've tried different copywriters and, and stuff like that or like content writers and they yeah. just give you like the most generic blog post and you're like where's the soul where's the style where's the you know Absolutely. the shrimpiness and for Absolutely. you like where's the <laughs> yeah where's the swag where, yeah. where, where's the passion no uh -huh. i agree i agree so no, absolutely. And, and as we build out our community, we will find exactly. or we will find those individuals and they will find us. Yeah. And that's what's so great about what's happening now with this, you know, recent success is that 
we're hoping individuals that are just as passionate about it mm -hmm. as us, who come from a place of, yeah, I like to wear my shoes too, yeah. will find us and will yeah. reach out and you know provide that growing camaraderie that we're looking to exactly. build. Exactly. It's like you're looking for the crossover, right? The person who loves sneakers and loves writing, yeah. right? Or the person who loves startups and loves planning and events. And it's yeah. like, you can, because community allows you to scale, right? You can have as many people in the community and as long as it's, it's running well and you, and you manage it well. And then like, like you're saying, those people rise up and say, yeah. I want to get involved. I, we just came from an event, like three people are like, I want to get involved. What can I do? You're, you're always acting too. Yeah. And it's like matching that, the kind of need with the skill set. And that's really how I think you build so much like deep, I guess like deep connection with the organization too. And that's yeah. the cool thing about community. It's like, they're not employees, but you know, some will become employees, some will, be you know consultants or whatever it is and i think that's the power to it it comes from within it's like building building community i guess there we go maybe that's yeah. the new intro for the podcast <laughs> yeah no i love it i love it i mean and just just to for a plug for shrimp society so 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 such a good great community to be a part of i know when you first reached out to me mm -hmm. i was searching right so mm -hmm. as someone born and raised here in miami not tapped into the tech community just learning who Andreessen Horowitz mm -hmm. or Sequoia, who, mm -hmm. you know, what that even is yeah. <laughs> that year. Yeah. You know, what the Shrimp Society did for me was it provided togetherness with mm -hmm. individuals who were going through exactly what I was going through, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it provided the ability to speak to someone who is looking how to uh, find an attorney, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To draft documents. Yeah looking to hire a dev, mm -hmm. looking to figure out a venue to hold mm -hmm. an event. So the yeah. Shrimp Society is, it was so instrumental in giving me that confidence mm -hmm. that what I'm feeling and what I'm going through, mm -hmm. my fellow founders are going yeah, through yeah. that as well. Yeah. And we can help each other. And you know, I think at the basis of community, that's kind of what it's all about kind of going through something together mm -hmm, definitely. and helping each other. So yeah. really, really, really cool what you built and I'm so happy to be a part of it Thank you know, you, and kind of rep it you know, <laughs> all the way. Hopefully I can rep it a lot longer and in a lot more, um, under a lot more brighter spotlights. 100% man, yeah. we gotta do a full uh, announcement. We're gonna, we tweeted about it, but we'll do a full like announcement in the newsletter too about the yeah, cool. 16Z thing, man. It's cool. just like, it's awesome to see everyone in the community getting, it's awesome to see everyone. We got to the point, the shrimp's been around for, I think it's been 365 days, like as of today or tomorrow. I gotta like look, but yeah, we check out the days. And it's cool to see, and it's really rewarding to see like, like entrepreneurs like you that are like, you know, we met, I don't know, nine months ago, 12 months ago. And you're like, Hey, I have this vision. Yeah. We're here. We're struggling. We're, you know, we're doing this, yeah. all yeah. this. And then, you know, 12 months later, nine months later, boom, you know, the, the top VC fund in the world is, is coming and investing and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah. it's incredible to see one, how like realistically, how long things take. And then also how, kind of how much grit you need to have to actually like yeah. do the thing, you know what I mean? To like actually so build we, a startup. We definitely see this as a starting line, yeah. not, not a finish line. Uh -huh. But to your point from when we met and when you told me about what you're doing with the Shrimp Society mm -hmm. till now, there's been so many lows, right? Yeah. So many lows. And it's about the grit the mm -hmm. persistence to not stop, yeah. to just really believe in it so much, to mm -hmm. just keep on going even today. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there'll be, you know, lows coming up yeah, this yeah. week. Yeah. But having the community, having the Shrimp Society to lean on sometimes mm -hmm. when you are having those issues. I know we used to do kind of a temperature check yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, every <laughs> month. That helps. Yeah. That helps and that helps push founders like myself who um, may feel like they're on an island, know that they're not, yeah. and push through to kind of checkpoints, yeah. like now, mm -hmm. right? Or starting lines, is, exactly. is how I want to look at it, so. Exactly, I love it. So something we ask everybody on the show is, what is your biggest goal for the next, the next quarter? Like when we look back, we check in at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, second quarter. So you got, you know, about six months here. What's like your six month 
So oh, for, for Loan My Soul? For Loan My Soul. We're going to check back in. So we want you to obviously succeed through this kind of accelerator program and really soak up everything that we can and really mm -hmm. leverage that network and that knowledge into raising a round, a pre-seed yeah. round. And then obviously we want to hit our KPIs as far as, you know, transactions and mm -hmm. members on the site and kind of come back here and be able to tell that story of those six months to the, to the Shrimp Society yeah. and, and kind of see what, what, uh, what the next goal is for the, for the six months after that. But yeah, right now it's just putting our head down. This is um, just the beginning now. It means there's a lot more work to do mm -hmm. and just growing, growing the community and raising that round is what's top of mind. I love me. it. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, appreciate you coming on the show. Where can people find you? Twitter, Instagram, what's your, what's your bill? Yeah. Find you, loan my soul information, drop all the plugs. Find me in the Shrimp Society Discord. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Rocking my shrimp. <laughs> Other than that, you can find me on Twitter. It's probably the best way. Underscore Brandon Chance. Okay. C-H-A-N-C-E. And just reach out. Check out Loan My Soul at Loan My Soul. That's S-O-L-E on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And uh, reach out if you have any questions or you have your sneaker head and, and you sneaker, have that passion. You're trying to get those sneakers. <laughs> you, you want some access uh, to some dope kicks, reach yeah. out to me and we can, we can chat. I love it, bro. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, man. This was awesome. Thank yeah, you. Big time. Big time. Okay.